Hey, what's up? Back with another video, and today we are going to be cutting RX-8 side sills. I'm going to show you the actual process and you know everything you need to do, everything you'll need to know to do this yourself. And uh, I don't have any special equipment. I don't have a drill press. I don't have a uh, dead rotor that I can use as a uh, side sill cutting jig. Although I would like to try that out and see how it is because it, it does seem like a really good method. But I don't have that shit and you probably don't either. So I'm gonna show you what I use to actually get the job done. It takes a little bit longer, but it's it's a way to do it and it's a way to do it cheaply. So if you're not building engines for people and things like that, you're probably not gonna to wanna to buy like expensive equipment and stuff like that, which a drill price you can get from Harbor Freight, they're not really that expensive. But like, if you don't wanna take up space, you you uh, would rather use for something else in your garage, then, well, this is probably the method for you if you're building motors for yourself. Anyway, I'll show you stuff I'm doing here. So if you watched my last video I, where I explain like the process of measuring side sills in a Renesis rotor correctly, uh, I explained the differences between measuring side sills for older rotors, stuff like that. I didn't show you visual representation because I only had a RX-8 rotor in front of me. But the way you do it on the older rotors is, while well, they're straight cut side sills, they're not tapered or anything. So they can go actually either way if they're brand new, or if you're reusing a side sill, you wanna use the spring side on the inner part of the, uh, of the rotor or the uh, slot. And then the wear surface goes on the iron and stuff like that. It should be self-explanatory. Anyway, you put your corner sills in, then you put the spring in, and then you just, measure it like that with it floating freely. And that's that's how you measure the clearance correctly on that. On this one, it's a little bit different. So you put the side sill in, the corner sills, which this is an uncut side sill, so it's not gonna be able to actually go in. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in a little bit. These are all cut over here. So this is for the rear rotor. You got two for the front rotor right here. And what you wanna do is take two six thousandths uh, filler gauges, put it on each end. Actually, you should be seeing a picture right now that shows you kind of how I have it set up, but you just stick it in the outer edge of uh, each end of the side sill. That way it pushes the side sill towards the inner part of the uh, side sill slot, and then you measure your clearance that way. Now, when I go through this uh, process, I'll show you you know, every little bit of this, every step of the way. Uh, as I'm cutting the side sill and stuff like that, I'm gonna speed that part up because it's you know a long and boring process. And this is not a quick process by any means whatsoever. Uh, this is gonna take you about, let's see, if, you, if you're really good, you can get this done in like 15 minutes the way I'm doing it per side sill, but it's probably gonna take you somewhere close to about 20 to 35 minutes each side sill. Now, if this is your first time ever cutting a side sill, I know the task seems intimidating. I felt the same way before I ever cut a side sill and I have made mistakes at cutting side sills before. I cut them too short and, or cut them too uneven to where I couldn't use the side sill. And I, I had to just do trial and error. That's probably what you're gonna do here. So I would suggest ordering three to four extra side sills that you may not need, but it's good to have those extra spares just in case. Now you might be wondering why I have uh, two different RX-8 rotors, one that's obviously very, very modified, and the other one that is, well, stock, unmodified, uh, right here in front of me, and that is because they are for two completely different applications. This one is gonna be going in my REW motor, which also calls for a different clearance because it doesn't need the same clearances that a RX-8 rotor does going into an RX-8 motor. So this one's been side clearance, so it doesn't have any of the, uh, the cast marks and uh, letter codes that suggest uh, what side sill would fit uh, in that slot if you were to order pre-cut side sills, which you can do, I don't suggest doing, but you can do it. And uh, well, I have to uh, mark this a little bit differently. Actually, the same way I do here, but whatever. I'm not going to ramble on into that too much. But this has also been uh, modified in the Apex slots to accept uh, 86 to 2002 Apex sills because it'll be used with peripheral exhaust ports, 
whereas this one will be used with side ports. So it doesn't matter which Apex seals you use there, but it's most beneficial to use a stock RX-8 Apex seal because there are no peripheral exhaust ports to put extra stress on those Apex seals. So that's, that's why stock RX-8 Apex seals are perfectly fine. Okay, I'm getting into the rambling bullshit again. But anyway, uh, so clearly I have one, two, and three marked next to each uh, side sill slot. That's because that's how I keep track of which side sill goes where. Because on the same side of the rotor, you'll have the same letter code on two different slots. So according to Mazda, these two slots are the exact same length and you would order the exact same pre-cut side sill if you wanted to go that route. I don't, I don't suggest that route, but you can go that route if you really want to and avoid this whole process. But doing so will uh, likely end up with uh, you know, different clearances for each slot. Um, that's why people mostly opt for the uncut side sill so they can cut them themselves to get a more accurate, accurate clearance. In, which in this case, I'm going for four thousandths, which is what I did for my own motor as well. But anyway, uh, so this is a front rotor, where you can tell uh, which rotor goes where, because RX-8 rotors are directional. When you look at the scallops, uh, the scallops up here would dictate that this is a uh, no, front rotor. Also, if you look on the faces, find it, you'll see that this one says FC right there. The rear one will say RC, and I don't know what the code right here means, but, you know, whatever. Or maybe that, that say, says something about its weight. I really don't know what this part means, but the FC and RC means a front or rear rotor. And this is also a C weight. Well, maybe the C part also correlates with the, uh, the weight of the rotor. Yeah, this is a C weight rotor. That's how you can identify that. And we are going to be cutting a side sill for the number three slot. So why exactly are RX-8 side sills so tricky to cut? It is because they are tapered. So unlike a older side sill, which is straight cut, and it's the same on both sides, doesn't matter which side you cut. Well, not you don't cut either side, whatever. But it doesn't matter which side you put it into the rotor. Actually, I'll get a 12A rotor show you that yeah so if you're cutting a brand new side sill for an older rotor then it's going to be the same no matter which side you put it in but on an rx8 you'll notice that uh, oh okay yeah, we'll just go with the uh, pre-cut side so on a brand new side sill one side will already be cut to the uh, correct you know angle and all that stuff. And if you look right here, it looks like it's cut unevenly at an angle if you look at the top. But if you look at this bottom part right here, you'll see that it's uh, cut straight across. That's because it's tapered, it's thick on the top, and thin on the bottom. So the top part is as thick as a old school side sill uh, in width, but the uh, bottom part is the same or a very similar width to a 86 to 2002 side sill. And uh, I don't know if this is 100% accurate, but the, the reasoning behind this, as it was explained to me, is that the, uh, the tapered uh, thing creates a windshield washer type, or windshield wiper type effect as it's going around and it helps keep uh, carbon buildup off the uh, side sills and stuff like that. Because it's kind of wiggling around in the uh, in the slot but um let's see when the uh when the side sill is completely depressed into the rotor uh there's not really that much wiggle room so i don't know how much of that is actually accurate or if it's accurate at all but again that's just how it was explained to me but that doesn't explain how to cut these side sills so we're going to go ahead and get to that now and you know i'm pretty, pretty far into this video and we haven't even gotten to the cutting the side sills yet so sorry about that but i'm trying to you know, get everything into one video the best I can. So what do you need to cut side sills? Well, let's show you that. So the way I cut side sills is, I guess you can consider it the poor man's method. I don't have a drill press. I don't have any, you know, machinery to assist with this 
I don't even have a bench grinder, which is also fairly cheap. But uh, the ones that are fairly cheap, uh, I went and looked at them, and I didn't like how uneven the uh, the wheel turned and stuff like that on them. Uh, which, ironically, is also the same place I got this. So, this is what I also use to port irons and stuff like that. Uh, it spins true, and, well, that's why I use it. So this bit, I forget the part number for it, but you go to Lowe's, you can find it there. It looks like this. Uh, I'll look up the part number and just probably put in the video or in the description or something like that so you can go buy it and use it yourself. So I just have it sitting right here, and then I just turn it on, and then I just cut down all the meat on the side sill so I can get it down to the point where it can fit in the slot between the two corner sills. And let's see, you're also going to need a couple filler gauges. I would suggest getting uh, two different filler gauges, uh, like a switchblade thing and that's that's what i got just two switchblade things of uh, filler gauges and you're gonna need two six thousandths or 0 0.15 millimeter uh filler gauges as so it can go on both ends of the apex or not apex sill side sill on the outer edge so it can compress it or not compress it but like push it towards the inner part of the slot that way you can correctly measure the uh, clearance with a well, whatever clearance you're going for. So let's see, for this rotor, when I cut the side sills for it, because it's going in my RW motor, I'm gonna be clearancing it to two thousandths, but because this is going in an RX8 motor and it's gonna be run uh, naturally aspirated, I'm gonna cl clearance it to four thousandths. Now the reason why uh, you do the extra clearance is because of the side exhaust ports. So, because these are now taking on this, the uh, job of older apex sills, where in older rotors on peripheral exhaust ports, uh, it would put extra stress, extra heat and pressure and stuff like that on the apex sill, which is why the uh, slots are deeper. And in older motors, uh, 74 through 85, it's three millimeter and 8.5 millimeters uh, deep, or at least that's the height of the apex sill. The, uh, the slot itself is deeper than that, but, well, not deeper than that, but like deep enough to accommodate this. Uh, in a Renesis, it does not have peripheral exhaust ports, so there's no extra stress or extra heat going on the apex sill. That's why a OEM apex sill in an RX-8 is perfectly fine to use. It's perfectly reliable. You won't have issues with it unless you have issues with some other system in your, uh, you know, in your car. So ignition, fuel, uh, tuning, whatever. If you have a shitty tuner that leans the fuck out of your motor and then he pops your motor and then blames your apex sills, well, it's because of a shitty tuning, not because of the apex sills. That's what breaks apex sills. Or, you know, just shitty maintenance. You, you're not maintaining your car. This isn't about apex sills, so let's get off that subject. Let's go on to this. So, the extra heat will dictate uh, the uh, extra clearance. Now, if you're turbocharging your RX-8 and you're it's not a peripheral exhaust motor, then you want to probably go for like six to eight thousandths is what I would suggest. But uh, NA four thousandths is perfectly fine. Two thousandths could be perfectly fine. I haven't tried it myself, but you know, if you want to try it yourself, then you know, be my guest. Have fun. Let me know how it goes. But I'm going to be doing this to four thousandths because that's what I've done all these two. Okay, so first things first. Uh, you want to make sure you are comfortable doing this or when doing this because you're going to be here for a bit and it's it'll get uncomfortable very fast and if you're already uncomfortable to begin with well that that can affect how you cut the sill and it could end up uh, resulting in a improperly cut side sill so you don't want to do that because well these are like what 20 bucks a piece and nobody wants to just throw away 20 bucks for no reason so uh, make yourself comfortable and we'll just have all your shit ready to go. So uh, to have your rotor set up, you're gonna need to have your uh, corner sill springs in. Uh, the corner sills you're gonna be using in your motor, so, or you can actually use two used ones, it should be okay. But ideally you wanna use two of the brand new ones that are going into your motor. Um, also a side sill spring in the slot. 
And then you also want to take the, uh, the uncut side sill, put it in the slot, and then press it up against the, uh, you know, the side that's already pre-cut from the factory. Look at your uh, corner sill on the uncut side and make sure that uh, you know how much material you're actually going to be taking. Because you don't want to just sit there and go and then put it in there and then find out you went like half a millimeter over because that would be bad and that would you know, trash the sill. Also, you don't want to be uh, on, uh, on the Dremel too long because you heat the end up too much, the end becomes brittle and it'll break right off. So, um, yeah. Oh, and to uh, get an idea of what angle you need to be cutting at, find a flat surface, just set it down to where you know it bottoms out on all sides and that is you know the angle that you need to be cutting at. You can also without turning this on put the cut side onto the bit and get an idea of okay that's the angle that I need to be cutting at. So get your uncut end, don't do it on this end because it's already cut and we're gonna go ahead and start. <laughs> Now, even though we barely even kiss the bit uh, with the side sill, uh, you can already see what kind of angle you're cutting at. So if it's even from side to side, that means you're cutting it straight. If it's uh, you know, more cut on one side and the other side you know, isn't even touched, that means you're cutting at the wrong angle. So uh, what I like to do is get it over here on this end and then just line it up the best I can and you know, just you know, eyeball it so it looks straight. And if I cut it and it appears to be cutting straight, then great, that's the, the correct angle. And then of course, you know, the correct cutting angle and stuff like that, whatever. I, I don't know all the names to call this shit, so you know, angles and all that fucking bullshit. I, I'm fucking tired, I just got off work a few hours ago, so. If I'm rambling on and it sounds all like I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, I know what I'm talking about, I know what I'm trying to say, I'm just fucking tired, I don't know how to say it right. So, anyway. <laughs> Okay, now the, the end of the side sill is already heating up a bit, so I'm gonna let it cool off for a few seconds, or like maybe 20 seconds or something like that. And while I'm doing that, I'm checking to make sure that I'm still cutting straight, which you know, I am for the most part, I don't see any deviation. So, we can go ahead and cut some more. Okay, so checking it right now, it is a little bit uneven. So that means I need to adjust the angle that I'm cutting at. So to fix that, look at which side is too high, which side is too low, and then you want to put more weight on that side so you can get, so you can get it more even or get it even again. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. perfectly straight yet, but it is straighter than it was. So we're gonna keep doing just that.
Okay, still not 100% perfectly straight, but it is a lot straighter now. Now, this isn't the, the part where you really need to focus. Uh, we are just cutting the excess meat off. But during this time, this is where you should be you know, practicing and getting the right angle to cut at. That way, when you actually get down to it, when you get to the point where it's actually fitting in the slot and you're about to start actually clearancing and getting your desired clearance, you'll already have that uh, the correct angle, that straight cut, and you won't trash a sill because you cut it too short trying to chase a uh, correct angle. So this is where you wanna be chasing your correct angle. And then after all that other stuff, that's when you start chasing the clearance. So, straight enough, but not completely straight. Okay, that looks a lot better, but the end of the side sill is a lot hotter now because I well, was on it for a little bit longer than I should have been, but it's not too bad. So, you know, if, if it feels hot uh, and it hasn't broken, then you're good. But the, these aren't all that easy to break, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you're on it way too long and the, the end of the sill gets way too hot, then it becomes brittle and then it breaks. But now we have our straight angle. Actually, it's a little bit lower on this side, so I need to adjust slightly, but it's, it's not the end of the world. I can easily fix that on the sandpaper. So I'm gonna adjust my uh, angle just slightly over. seems to be going back and forth a little bit. So it's it's not perfectly straight, but it's, it's straight enough. Now, uh, we still haven't gotten past the, uh, you know, how, how would I explain this? We still haven't gotten past the very uh, tip of it. Uh, it's still flat on this edge, and we, you know, it doesn't look like this yet. So we're gonna just keep going and just keep clearancing. Um, I'm actually going to speed up through this part so I can get to the, the next phase of this. Okay, so I don't know how well you can see that, but now I'm at the point where I have that similar angle to the pre-cut side. I can see the, the tapered shape of the end of the apex, or the side sill, I keep saying apex sill. <laughs> I, I see the tapered shape of the side sill end, and that's, that's when you, you know, you're through the end tip of that thing. Now, uh, let's see the flat side, or the side that's uh, been cut by this, is gonna look uneven and jagged and stuff like that. Now, periodically, uh, you're gonna be getting uh, burrs and stuff like that, just little uh, excess metal that's being removed from it, but it's still stuck to the uh, the side sill itself. So what you do is come over to your sandpaper. This is just a used piece of sandpaper, and you just go on both sides very, very lightly, kind of like a paintbrush type thing, and that gets rid of the burrs. Now, uh, to make this more even and smooth and stuff like that, so you can better see the uh, the angle that it's being cut at. Go ahead and like you're clearancing, but not necessarily clearancing, you're just evening out the, uh, the finish on it. Make it nice and smooth. And then once it's all nice and smooth, which it almost is. Okay, that, that's good enough. Check and make sure that the uh, the cut is actually straight, and then you're going to put it in on the uh, 
the clearancing the clearance side of the uh, the side sill. Put it in the slot, press it in or towards the inner part of the rotor, and then just eyeball it and then look to see if you're cutting at the correct angle uh, according to the uh, the corner sill. Actually, I'll show you a little bit. Okay, so right here. Pay attention to my fingernails. Yes, I'm a fingernail biter. It's a bad habit. Don't do it. You're gonna do it anyway, but yeah, don't do it. Anyway, you can see right there, the angle is good. So I'm gonna keep trying to maintain that angle. Yeah, just push it towards the inner, inner uh, part of the rudder. And yeah, you just keep going at that angle. Okay, so uh, we're not quite to the point where it can just fall right into the slot. Uh, we still got a little bit more meat to go. But as you're doing this, when you start to get close, what you want to do is you want to take it off the, the uh, corner sill and just start put, trying to uh, get it to the point where it can actually fall right in. It's not to that point yet. We still got more, mater more material to remove but uh, this gives you a good idea of how much further you need to go, how much more material you need to remove, because just putting it over the corner sill isn't going to give you the, uh, the most accurate answer to that question. So take it off the uh, corner sill and then just put it on the outside and just kind of look and see, okay, it's about to go into the slot. It actually kind of is in the slot now, but it's just not there yet. And when you do start to get close, you want to just become less and less aggressive with the cutting, which you shouldn't be aggressive at all, but like less aggressive than non-aggressive, but still, you know, whatever. However you want to take that, I, I know what I mean. I know what I'm trying to say. So hopefully you do too. But uh, you just want to be really cautious and you know, realize that you're starting to get close to be able to start actually clearancing and only using the sandpaper because you only use this to cut down the meat of the uh, or the excess meat of the uh, side sill. You don't use it to actually do the clearancing. You use the sandpaper for clearancing, which we're going to get to in just a minute. But anyway, let's get back to cutting meat. Okay, so not 100% of the way there yet, uh, but I am going to no longer use the Dremel because it is close enough to snug inside the slot. It's not sitting all the way down, uh, completely between the corner sills. It's down to the point where I want to start using the sandpaper. Now, I should have mentioned this a little bit ago, but uh, you know, better late than never. Uh, when you get the wrong angle, when you're cutting your uh, side sill with the Dremel, uh, you can use the, uh, the sandpaper to correct your angle uh, at a more slower rate. So you're not you know, chasing it with the Dremel the entire time and end up you know, cutting too far or something like that. Use this, and I like to use the used piece of sa uh, sandpaper. And of course, if you haven't used any of them yet, you're gonna have a uh, fresh piece. It's gonna cut a lot quicker but I like to use the uh, used piece for the you know, seals I cut afterwards. And because it's uh, more smoothed out, it's not as aggressive as a uh, brand new piece of sandpaper. And it just kind of you know, gives you a better, I guess a better result as far as uh, correcting your uh, incorrectly cut angle. So that's uh, why you keep seeing me go back and forth on this because well, it helps me smooth out the roughness on there and also correct the angle if I need to correct it. And then, you know, I can get a better idea of uh, cutting it there. Anyway, now I'm at the point where I want to start using the new piece of sandpaper to start cutting me at a slower rate, but also a more accurate cut or whatever, whatever you want to call it. So go ahead. 
slew. And when you make the, the marks on the new piece of sandpaper, it'll give you an idea of how evenly you're actually cutting. So if you're putting too much weight on one side or the other, you're gonna have a thinner, like white mark like that. But if you're cutting it evenly, you're gonna have roughly the full width of the, uh, the side sill. So I'm gonna make a few passes. And when you do this, you wanna put a decent amount of pressure on it, but you don't wanna to put too much pressure on it. This is especially critical on older side sills, uh, 86 to 2002, because of how thin they are. They break very, very easily if you put too much pressure on them. These ones are thicker, just like these uh, 74 through 85 side sills. So it's not as big of a deal to put a little more pressure on them because they can take it, but uh, you still wanna be very cautious so you don't actually break the sill. Okay, they're still cutting pretty straight. Double check, make sure you got a good angle against the corner sill, which we do. Put it into the slot, and it's a lot closer to flush with the corner sills now. Of course, it's a, a it's way too tight, so you can't actually put it, put it up and down inside the slot. But we are getting closer, slowly but surely. Still a nice straight cut, so that's good. All right. So now it seems to be flush with the corner sills, but of course it's you know still way too long because it cannot compress into the slot because if it does and you assemble the motor like this, then well, it's gonna crush the sill and it's gonna destroy either the sill or damage the rotor, uh, destroy a corner sill or two, whatever. Whatever it wants to do when it compresses, that's what it'll do. Now that I have a, a decent amount of coverage that I've actually gone over the sandpaper, I'm gonna use this the same way that I'm using, I was using this piece, but this is still a little bit rougher, so I can still cut through meat a little bit quicker than this one. But I'm just gonna be using this to get down to the point where I can actually uh, move up and down inside the slot. That's when I wanna start measuring clearance. So we're gonna go ahead and check it again. See where we're at. Getting closer, but still no movement. I'm going fast like this because one, I already know the angle that I need to be cutting at. I'm just maintaining that angle. And well, when you when you do that many passes that quickly, the, the uh, end of the sill can still heat up the same way it does on the Dremel. So you also wanna be cautious of that. Take a couple breaks, let it cool down, then continue. All right, so that is actually kind of toasty now. Oh, okay. So actually I was cutting at a little bit of an incorrect angle. So I'm gonna go ahead and shift my weight over to the other side, to the high side. I 
I guess that's a good example of, uh, you know, just be cautious of the angle you're cutting at. So I got a little bit ahead of myself, went a little too quickly, and then I ended up with a slightly incorrect angle. Not the end of the world, we still have plenty of meat to go through to actually clearance and stuff like that. So that is perfectly fine. So just go nice and slow. straight again. Get rid of those, those little burrs and shit. Okay, so uh, another thing, uh, when you actually start to get it down to the point where you can actually press it in, you're gonna be able to move it from side to side. Now, if I try to do that now, it binds up against the corner seals. So we still have more meat to cut through. process a little bit, get a little bit more into the new material, the newer part of the sandpaper, whatever. Double check, make sure that cut is nice and straight, which it is. Okay, now we have a little bit of wiggle room. So we're gonna go ahead and push it up and down. It is still binding. So it's not quite there yet, but it does, it does actually wiggle from side to side. Okay, so uh, right here, this is the exact spot that people will make the mistake of incorrectly clearancing the side sill. So let's say they're, they wanna go for 2000s on either a uh, Renesis or an older 13B, 20B, or whatever you're building with Arc 8 rotors. They'll, they'll just clear, they'll, uh, measure it just like this with nothing in the, uh, in the slots on the outer edge. I'll just go through and be like, okay, I have a 2000s clearance, or maybe it's 4000s, I don't know. Oh yeah, they, yeah that is actually 4000s right there. So on an older motor, that would be 4000s right there. But on this one, that is no clearance at all, because if I push it down to the slot, it's binding against the side or the uh, corner sill. So we still got more room to go. put our six thousandths filler gauges in. When you put this in, you wanna make sure that the side sill is even, um, you know, just nice and even and flat between both corner sills. And then you wanna get it underneath the spring. You wanna bottom it out in the side sill slot and underneath the spring. Do the same thing on the other side. Check and make sure that's nice and flat. We're gonna go ahead and take two thousandths just to see where that's at. So right now I cannot get that two thousandths uh, filler gauge between the side sill and the corner sill. 
That means that it's not even close to two thousandths. But when I take these out, it looks like I have way too much clearance. Like that, I can wiggle that uh, four thousandths right through uh, the middle of there. So that's, uh, that's a good example of incorrectly clearancing and whatever and whatnot. You think you over clearanced, but really you don't even have any clearance. Let's see if the two thousands fits through there now. Okay, so two thousands fits through there now, but it does bind up quite a bit. So that's probably, I guess, what would that be? Is that in millimeters? 0.5 millimeters. So that's probably like a 0 0.03 millimeter, something like that. So it's there. Oh, well, it's getting there. It's close. Not quite there yet. Keep in mind that we are going for four thousandths, so we still got two thousandths to go on top of that. Oh, actually, I need to reposition that spring. So it's right in the middle where it would be as if you were assembling the motor. Okay. Put that in there. And just to ensure that you're not over clearancing or anything like that, when you put the filler gauges in, you wanna push the side sill over towards the uh, pre-cut side so that it's leaning up against that instead of you know, leaning up against here, because once it's compressed in there, it'll be, well, it'll be pressing against it. There it is. Make sure it's nice and flat. Still the same thing. So we've still got a bit to go. It's nice and loose in there. Let's see how the 4,000s fits in there. Okay, so that's kind of what I want to see. So it goes through there pretty loosely, but it doesn't go through there super, super freely like the 2,000s did. I do feel a little bit of binding, but that's, that's about as much as I want to you know, feel in there. Now, from here, I'm gonna go ahead Lay this flat. And then do the same with this side, except it's too long, you can't put them completely flat, but flat enough. Okay, that should be good. Now, can we get the 4,000th through like this? Thank you. 
Oh, popped out the other side. So let's try this. So you want to make sure that this is completely flat. And if it's popping out like that, that's not going to do any good. All right, so that's nice and flat now. Now we can do the same with this side. Stick it in. Eyeball just to make sure it looks even. And then go and stick your fill gauge in there, which I can't seem to do. I stick the two thousandths in there. Now this is where you want to triple check because if you think that your clearance is too tight still, and it really isn't, it may just be the uh, the end of the side so that you're trying to measure. It's slightly pushed over. Because my first time doing this on my own motor, on my own rotors, uh, that's where I made the mistake and I ended up over clearancing. Okay, so that feels exactly the same as it did before. Let's double check, make sure that's actually even across the whole way. Okay. So when you're putting your fill gauge through there, you want it to move fairly freely, but you also want to fill a little tiny bit of binding. And then the final check is to just see how it moves in and out of the slot. So just press it in and out as evenly as possible. And that feels nice and free. Now, without the filler gauges in there, move from side to side, it looks like it has a shitload of uh, clearance and you probably don't want that. You definitely don't want that on older rotors, but you do want to see that kind of movement on RX-8 rotors without any filler gauges in there. So that is how you correctly clearance an RX-8 side sill to four thousandths. Okay, now that I have this side sill completely finished, I'm gonna go ahead and Mark this bag based on the number that I wrote there. So it's in number three. For clearance, four thousandths. And for front. And then front of the front rotor. Slot. Now, because this is letter coded, not number coded like older rotors, this is going to be slot P. And just like that. Now, if this was my first side sill that I cut, I would have 11 more to go for two rotors. Or add six for uh, each rotor. If you're building a three rotor, a four rotor, five rotor, a six rotor, however many rotors you're bu building uh, an engine out of, you know, just times that by six because there's six for each rotor. And yeah, that's, that's the whole process. Well, that was sure fun. Uh, I'm tired as fuck, so I'm gonna go to sleep. But uh, hopefully this helps some of you out. I know this is a very long video and uh, well, not everybody's gonna watch everything the whole way through. But for those of you who really want to actually get an idea of what the actual process is like, it's, it's not gonna take you this long for each side sill. The only reason it took me so long here in the video was because of explaining and you know not just doing the process itself. Again, each side sill is probably gonna end up taking you somewhere between like 15 to you know, 25 minutes. Uh, 
you know, your first time, your first few seals are probably going to take you 30 to 40 minutes, somewhere around there. So just take your time, get a good idea of the process, order a few extra seals just to give yourself that wiggle room so you're not under pressure to uh, you know, get every single one perfect every single time. Because you're gonna mess up, you're gonna make mistakes. I've made mistakes in the past. I had to throw the sills away. I've broken the sills and you know, had to just start over uh, from scratch. Even though I was right there, almost done, snapped. It, it happens, but that's part of the learning process. So uh, yeah. Anyway, again, hope this video helped some of you out. And if it did, leave a thumbs up, uh, like and whatever. Comment, subscribe, share, and all that shit. Uh, I went out. Yeah, that's it. See ya.